start this one from scratch so you can kind of see all of the processing that goes into processing a NeuroQ study. So this is the first screen that's going to come up when you launch data into NeuroQ. Regardless of what the data is, you'll always start off this screen. There are uh, uh, quite a few preferences um, and radio pharmaceuticals. So we have a table right now. It's not the most the friendliest, but it was the best we could do at the time so that you can add keywords to automatically recognize Visimil versus NeuroSeq versus Amivid versus FTG or HMPA or ECD. Um, and you can see that this one automatically determined that it was FTG. If it makes a mistake, and it might, um, there's a drop down control database where you can select the actual normal database. And if you do that, it's going to tell you, oh, wait, I think this is FTG. Are you sure you really want to do that? Um, and then you can say, yes, I'm really sure. And it will duly fix things. Um, but we'll set that back to FTG. So that's the normal files. Um, there's a little bit of information that we extract from the file to help you in case um, <laughs> a site is not sure what it is. Uh, the series description, radio pharmaceutical, and that kind of thing, just so that they can double check that with the normal file that it's currently using. So that's the normal file selection. So there are three panes, and this is for the FDG analysis. One is to set the axial limits. You don't want them real tight. Um, and we did this because we had at least one manufacturer who instead of just scanning the brain, scanned all the way down to like mid sternum. And we have that much information, then the template registration tends to not work as well. And so that's why we added this uh, axial plane limits just to limit it to where the brain is so that it will match and register with the template a little better. The next thing you want to do is remove the scalp. That's a thresholding procedure, as well as some uh, other additional um, procedures that that go into that thresholding. Uh, the default is 20%, which works pretty well for most FDG scans. Um, you just click process, and it does that and applies the threshold. And when it's done, you'll see the processed image, and then it will replace uh, the processed image on the right. If it doesn't quite get it, this so this kind of inf is okay, um, where we get a little bit of background activity. What you really don't want is for it to start eating into the brain. So if the threshold is too high and it starts eating into the brain and removing brain tissue, that's when you might want to change the threshold. Um, and then we want to do a rigid registration. That accounts for any head tilt in the scanner. Um, compared to the way our actual template was um, acquired and reoriented. And then once you do the rigid registration, then you reformat. And now this is a nonlinear reformatting to force the patient brain into the same template space as our, as our template. And once it does that, then the regions and the clusters that are defined on our template can automatically be applied on top of the patient brain, and then we can do the quantification. So this doesn't take uh, too long, maybe 20, 30 seconds or so. And so we'll wait for this to complete. There we go. So once it's completed, one can save the study, and it saves all of the processing and reorientation and reformatting um, so that the referring physician doesn't have to go through the process that I just went through. And so now that we've done the